All right, NCAA 14 with the Vols. Vols in the top 10, winding down the last couple of weeks of the regular season. We got Vandy coming to town at 7-4. and four. They've kind of fallen off a little bit, but they're having a good year for Vandy. 7-4 and four is not a bad year for Vandy at all. Got a chance to win eight games, go to a halfway decent bowl game. We got um, Vandy and then Kentucky. And then we have the SEC title game. Take a look at some conference standings. You know, our trip to Atlanta is booked. Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Vandy. At seven and four, they've got some pretty significant injuries. Wow. They have, yeah, where their season finale, it looks like. But, you know, not a bad year. They beat AM, they beat uh, Mizzou, they beat Ole Miss. The SEC West. It was looking dicey there for a bit, but the uh, standings in the SEC West look closer to what you'd expect. Bama, LSU, A&M, you know, tiebreaker is going to have to come into play here. You know, this is not a vintage Bama season by any stretch of imagination, but they seem to have righted the ship in a big way in the second half of the year. They've won five games in a row. Now, the polls are crazy. In the coaches' poll, you got UCF. They got ECU this week. Michigan State has Northwestern. Ohio State, Washington. The um, UT San Antonio Roadrunners are number five and have two <laughs> votes for number one. Uh, Clemson, Michigan, Oklahoma, LSU, Tennessee. What I'm trying to figure out here is, is there an avenue where we could get a UCF, UT San Antonio National Championship game? If UCF wins out, they're going to stay where they are. But let's say Washington State loses the Pac-12 Championship game. Michigan and Ohio, Michigan State and Ohio State are in the same um, division, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But what if, what if Washington State loses the Pac-12, and either Ohio State, Michigan State, or Michigan lose the Big 12, Big 10 championship. And, you know, Clemson at number six, well, Clemson at number six would probably leapfrog UTSA, we would think. But let's say they don't. Let's, or let's say Clemson loses. I'm actually halfway tempted to... Uh, um, play some games to manipulate the outcome to make this happen, but I won't do that. <laughs> but that, that'd be hilarious. Texas drops from three all the way down to 16. Oregon seven and three. They've had a rough go of it in the second half of the year. La Tech is um, nine and one and at 18. So we're on a La Tech... Um, UT San Antonio collision course if they beat uh, Western Kentucky. That's one of the games of the year in the season. La Tech UTSA. That has major national implications. And the rest of the poll is UCLA, you got Florida. Virginia, AM, Nebraska, Utah, Arizona. Washington dropped out. Cal, Baylor, Oregon State, Votech, Mizzou receiving votes. And the BCS poll 
it's pretty much the same. UCF, Michigan State, one and two, Washington State and Ohio State behind them. I don't think UCF is in danger of falling out of the two spot. They continue to win. Um, the Roadrunners, you know, here's the danger here for them with Clemson right behind them. And, you know, Clemson's strength of schedule. They have a um, FBS school or FCS school this week, and they have South Carolina plus a conference championship game. LSU, Oklahoma, Bama, Tennessee, Pitt, Arizona State, Boston College, Texas, Georgia, Oregon, Florida. Uh, everything else is the same here. So there you go. Our recruiting class is taking shape. We got some big commits. We got um, Harvey Campbell. We beat out Vandy for him, the number one rated safety in the class. Four-star recruit. That's a big get for us. And he's likely to see the field, you know, really early. We also got four-star um, recruit, number 12 pass rusher, uh, Calvin Bryant. We beat out Georgia for him. As well as three-star Jeremy Parham. He's got some upside. Let's have a red shirt here. We should put a red shirt year on him. And by his red shirt, you know, junior year, he should be a decent rotation player at least. Still in the money or in the running for um, Cody Anderson here. Three-star guy. We got Sam Rivera, 6'4". Juco wide receiver. Our wide receiver unit is going to be thin next season. That's a key get. Michael Dudley. A 78 overall two-star Juco. Rotational piece. 80 power move, 81 finesse move, 74 block shed. And I could probably slap it with the depth I have defensive tackle. We could slap a red shirt year on him and get more growth out of him. Corey Campbell. Again, we need receivers. We need bodies at receivers. We get Juco corner Thomas Jensen, three-star recruit. I'm always saying if I lack speed at the corner position, the coverage ratings are good, but their long speed ain't great. He gives me 92 speed. Acceleration and agility aren't the greatest. 85 jumping, though. 90 man, 88 zone, 80 press. Antonio Rawls, another big get. We beat out Army for him. He either wanted to serve his country or play in the SEC and get to the NFL. One of the two. And he chose the uh, latter. Number four rated uh, middle linebacker. Four-star recruit. And he projects to be a good, versatile, rangy, sideline side linebacker with some good coverage skills. Coverage skills need some room to grow, but he's got, you know, some good athletic traits. 88 pursuit, 85 speed, 88 acceleration, 79 block shed, and he has some pass rush abilities as well for when he has to blitz. Interesting prospect. Brandon Greco, this uh, three-star safety, at six foot two twenty, he doesn't have great coverage ratings for even a um, box, you know, four two five or three three five stack safety. But he could make a pretty decent um, three three five stack or a four two five um, off-ball backer. Interesting linebacker might be in his future. And we are in a pitched battle for this guy. Remember Robert Webster, this 6'4 freak of nature? We're in a battle with Ohio State for him. Four-star receiver, number 37 overall rated receiver in this class. 80 overall at 6'4. He has 94 speed, 93 acceleration, 80 jumping, 88 route running. Catch test needs some work. but he's got some really good athletic ability. And we're still in the mix for Derek Carter, three-star corner. And we're kind of falling off the pace. 
for Tim Bart. I don't really mind all that much. Um, it doesn't really fit his past block ratings, but um, again, you can never have too many linemen prospects. But we're probably not going to get him. As of right now, we have a total of 14 commits and we have a top 20 recruiting class. We're ranked number 17. That's going to change. That, that's pretty fluid. I mean, Alabama only has nine commits so far, and that's going to increase. So they're going to jump up. Uh, Texas as well. Ohio State, they're going to jump up. Vandy is having a good recruiting year. You know, Clemson's going to jump up as well. Utah, BYU. BYU's having a good recruiting year as well. Top 25 recruiting class. You know, Oklahoma, they'll jump up. They only, they only have five commits right now. That'll change as we go into all-season recruiting. But we have a good head start. Georgia has the number one recruiting class in the land so far. North Khaki, number two. Miami recruiting well. Michigan, Notre Dame, Ole Miss, A&M, Penn State, Florida, Whiskey. Florida State's up there. Minnesota and Arkansas, Iowa State, Iowa. So you see a lot of the usual suspects in the uh, top 25 in recruiting so far. And no surprises there, really. Let's get it in. Glad to have you with us in the studio. I'm Reese Davis, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Tennessee's been extraordinarily consistent all season long. They sit on top of their division. Everything's gone right. That's the way it always is when everything suddenly goes wrong. One letdown can spoil an entire season's worth of work. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for checking out the pregame show. NCAA college football action coming right at you. Brad and Kirk on the call. David and I are back at halftime. The Maglia is lined up and just about ready to send this one off. All right, let's go. To get this game underway. He just drills this one. Seniors probably think it seems like yesterday they took the field for the first time. Today, they take the field for the last time. So here comes the offense taking the field for the first time today. Oh, dropped. The ground incomplete. Vanderbilt's got a guy that's in a running for. Legion Lipscomb's having a good year, huh? You know, the best it's a big time season. Really's after you win them. Right now, it's all speculation. He's just got to play the game. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 25. Setting up blockers or running backs got it on the screen and he shoved out of All right. Good job. That screen play gets him a yard at the most. It's a nice play by the defense to shut down all the lanes so this halfback wasn't able to make anything happen on that play. One of the top stadiums in the nation. This crowd comes to play themselves. Going long. Stand up for yourself. Oh, 
shot at the pick. Now it's going to be fourth down. Nice defense. That was picture perfect three and out. Good series for these guys. Now the offense gets ready to take their first crack at it. Oh, come on now. Accuracy is such a vital part of being a quarterback. You've got to have an ability from their own 41 yard line. Harrison State, UCLA, big game in the Pac 12. Wants to go long and does. I'm not sure the quarterback saw him when he was getting ready to pass because he stuck his paw right in the pass. Okay, let's go. The 42-yard line. The defense might need to make some changes to their coverage scheme because that was just too easy. Looks like they're trying to catch the defense off guard here. There we go. There we go. Nice touch. At the 16-yard line. He sort of rainbowed that one into the air, which can be risky. You're giving the defender or multiple defenders time to get there. But that time, it worked out nicely. Come on. down there on a seven yard completion and how about the poise of this quarterback to locate his receiver past the sticks and get in the ball that was a great throw and i think it was the quick throw by the quarterback that fouled up the defense on that one get in there touchdown volunteers and easy squeezy for the score. Yep, he punched that in from a short distance. He had great blocking up front on that ball. Perfect job there of spreading out that defense and then going to the ground game. Let's get an update now. Here's Reese Davis. Reese. Let's check in on the SEC with a supersonic speed defense. Mississippi State. Latek won their game. On a sumo wrestler. Mississippi State gets the win, 21-14. In another game, the Cornhuskers were ranked number 23. A tough, solid performance. LSU wins. Will they be able to stay in the poll? This was a tight one to the very end. Uh, Emma beats Virginia. Lions take it by three. Thanks, Reese. 7-0 game here. Not things up in a heartbeat. It's way too early to change your game plan. Oh, wow. Wow. And they make the stop around the 45 yard line. Number 35 on the tackle at the 45 yard line. First down. He went into beast mode, huh? You play so many tempo teams, it's actually disorienting when you don't play one. From their own 45-yard line. First down. Oh, the Roadrunners are losing. They'll give it off here. And he's tackled around the 47-yard line. Third down now, and they need to get it inside the 45. Really one of the very tough places to play in college football, and it's no different today. Just throws this one away. Why did he throw that away? Looks like he had a guy open. He had a chance at the out route. Now he tries to buy some time. And he Oof. drilled at the 26 yard line. They'll bring him down. 
All right, let's go. He kept it himself and picked up a good looking first down. Great execution and a good decision there by the quarterback. The quarterback in the gun, empty backfield, five wide receivers in the formation. Here comes the pressure. Ah, stinker. The 36 yard line. They'll line up with five wide receivers. Let's go! Tosses out to the tailback on the screen. Ooh, we got decked. Defenses always get the ball into their playmakers' hands however they can. The screenplay is certainly one of those ways to accomplish that. Nice, 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 well done. Caught him in a blitz, had a nice convoy there. Juwan Jennings was faster, he might have split that. Closing our will early here up front. Quick strike to the receiver. Oh, go. What a play. Let's go. Brandon Johnson. Well, there goes the dream of a UCF uh, UTSA national championship game. A major upset is finished. The Mean Green gets the win by eight. And for Tennessee, I'm sure they're well aware. Oh, good cutback. Tackle made at the 46. He unloads it. Oh, let's go. That's a great tackle at the 25. Good range, Mr. McCullough. Brad, it's still early in this game. They might be able to get back into it. I just feel like the quarterback seems to be forcing things a bit. Now, I understand trying to get back. That was close. The game. But that time, to throw an interception when you really need points, that was a big mistake. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball on their own 25. All right, let's let's go for the knockout blow. Oh, tight fit. Tackle right around the forty. throw ah uh, get it over his head man come on uh, that's frustrating just when it looked like this offense might be able to put this game out of reach you turn the football over with an interception? Boy, this could come back in a big way to bite you. We've got a first and ten. Don't let you consistently put touch on that throw. Or... Again, that's one of those things where the game shows this age. And he 
tackles him hard at the 47-yard line. Tackle. Good job. Uh, Makes it out to about the 30. And the crowd is always into it here. Ah, uh, who got, just got beat off the line? Jeez. saw something upstairs it led to a touchdown you can think the play calling there very impressive here's an update from the studio and restate wait till you see the action in Athens. and for kentucky they're looking to win two in a row and for rose he punched one into the end zone on the ground the wildcats have the lead 14 7. touchdown difference in this one Looks like we're going to have a good game on our hands. After one, 14-7, Volunteer. And he's taken down right around the 38-yard line. complete he's got space to work he's knocked out of bounds at the 45 yard line first down come up with a sack they get to the quarterback and end that play before it even got started this young man didn't even have a chance to make something happen it's tough to find your receivers when the defense is in your complete he's got room and he shoved out of bounds around the five yard line Makes it out to about the 43. Absolutely crazy. They bring the quarterback down. The protection broke down. The defense was in the backfield in a hurry, and they brought the quarterback down. Nice play. just a sound play by the defense. They dropped him well short of the line of scrimmage. Aaron and out long. Great catch there before they can knock him out of bounds. With room to work. 
They'll bring him down around the 11 yard line. in the studio with this update. Reese. Let's check in on the SEC. This is a game we've been watching closely today. The Bulldogs unleash their aerial assault and find Pater for a touchdown. The Wildcats are out front, 21-14. Three touchdowns. Throws it deep. Oh, what an interception. And they make the stop at the 41. starting to get the sense that this guy's feeling the pressure that he has to make something happen but what he has to realize is he's only making it worse and he tackles him hard at the 47 tackle at the 25 Touchdown. He's already thrown for three scores. Well, the quarterback's going to get a lot of credit, but I think the thing that has helped him the most back there is the protection by the offensive line. He has had plenty of time to make the take care of the football. These guys need to remember that on this drive. And he's hit immediately. Nice pickup as they connect on the pass play. Well, they look to be... He's immediately tackled. He's got his man across the middle. He's tackled at the 28-yard line. That's a big catch for this young guy because it puts him over 1,000 yards receiving. And down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 28. Hit as he threw, and he completes it. And he's tackled at the 20. Throws quickly, and it's almost intercepted. Yeah, the quarterback's breathing a huge sigh of relief because the unit is on the field. They'll try for three points. Kicks up, and it's through the uprights. Let's go to the studio for this Reese Davis update. Between the hedges, the dogs are playing ball in Athens. This one's been entertaining us all day long. The Wildcats deliver the perfect connection and a touchdown. Kentucky's on top, 28-14. And for the comedy. Well, we played a half of football. Tennessee's got a huge lead. We played 30 minutes. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. David Pollock and I here in the studio to break down everything that just happened in your game. I really hope you'll stick around and watch the second half of this game. During the second half, I expect Kirk Herbstreit to give us a comprehensive history of every playbook he's ever had in his entire football career dating back to Pee Wee. That would be infinitely more interesting than having to watch the second half of this blowout. 
<laughs> Definitely, uh, that would be probably more entertaining. You know, we get on games all the time. They start to get out of hand. You got to empty the bucket. So, guys, back to you. Have some fun. Tell me something I don't know. These teams are pretty boring. Give me something from the human interest file, Brad Nessler. David and I will stay locked in on everything going on in college football. We're going to wrap it up here in the studio. Just about time to get you out to your second half. Brad and Kirk ready with a call. Down he goes at the 34-yard line. Makes it to the 41. it to the 38 yard line they hook up over the middle and they make the stop right around the 16 yard line he's up to 300 yards passing he's been able to get up and down the field all day today moving consistently and effectively Touchdown, Volunteers. Just so standing by with this update. Reese, wait till you see the action in Athens. We've been watching this thing all day long. The Bulldogs unleash their aerial assault and score a touchdown. The Wildcats have the lead, 28-21. And he's tackled right away. He scrambles, heading for the corner. And they get the sack. Absolutely perfect call by the defensive coordinator. He brought just the right amount of pressure from the right direction, and it seemed to confuse the offense. Pulls it in, first down, and he's knocked out of bounds. And for Jennings, he makes it 100 yards worth of catches. If you can get over... Fires out to his receiver. And he's taken down at the 42. Going deep. Can't connect. Yeah, any time a quarterback makes a throw... He's looking for six. Picked off. Wait a second. Who, who's calling the plays here? You've got a huge lead, and you're still throwing the football into coverage? What are you doing trying to let the guy get back into the... We head to the fourth quarter, and this one is well in hand. Tennessee's running away with it. wide receivers in the formation. He's tackled right around the 44-yard line. And he's sacked. Oh, that is a big hit on the quarterback. That's one of those as an offensive lineman, when the film study starts to come around, you're going to kind of sink in your chair and just hope they don't call you out because you're going to get embarrassed on Monday on that one. Quick out to his receiver. 
He's taken down around the 39-yard line. That makes it first and 10. Scrambling. They bring the quarterback down. That's a loss of three yards on the play. That makes it second and 14. Inside the 10. What a play, and that is first and goal. Still playing hard out there. Nice job by the offense to get the final few yards to the end zone. Yeah, they knew what play to call for in that situation and made it work. Tackle made around the 49-yard line. But I'm going to tell you something. This young man is ready. ready. Throws it in a hurry. Big play, and it's first and goal. That makes it first and goal. He's into the open field. Touchdown, Volunteers. Very impressive run by the halfback to find the end zone. Good play call here by the offensive coordinator. He realizes when you get down into the red zone. Davis joins us in the studio with this update. Reese. The Bulldogs come into today's game ranked number 15. Let's take yet another peek at this game. And for Georgia, they've managed to make some noise with their passing game. They get into the end zone for a touchdown. Plenty of scoring, but we might as well be 0-0, tied at 28. Well, it seems like every year we have one of those weekends. For Kirk and Aaron, I think I can say we're glad this one's over. Tennessee, 49, Vanderbilt, 17. Let's get Kirk Herbstreet's final thoughts on this one. Herbie, what do you got for us? Well, this rivalry game didn't live up to the hype this year. There's pure gratification on one sideline and sheer disappointment on the other. You can bet that the loser in this one will have this date marked in red on their calendar for next year. That's it for this presentation of NCAA Football 14. For Kirk Herbstreet, I'm Brad Nessler saying thanks, and we'll see you soon.